Room sizing and subwoofers. Uh, nearly everybody has it wrong, in my opinion. <laughs> so this is going to be another controversial video of mine. Before I get started, please subscribe, hit the like button. I've had a huge gap in producing content, so all the help I can get, I, I really appreciate. Uh, I'm not a fan of conventional wisdom. I mean, often conventional wisdom is wonderful and perfectly acceptable. Other times it's misleading. Um, for example, I don't like the Max SPL uh, specification when it comes to subwoofers. It doesn't tell me anything. Uh, I don't like uh, the uh, speaker sensitivity rating. I, I find it completely useless because it doesn't tell you much. Um, so, you know, I, I don't agree with all this stuff. So when it comes to room size and subwoofers, uh, there's all kinds of calculations, general guidelines and opinions, and I disagree with most of them. <laughs> so it really, it just, it doesn't make sense and I'll explain why, but some people will say that if you have a 10 by 10 room, then a 10 inch or an eight inch subwoofer will do. But if you have a 20 by 20, you need a 12 inch or larger. And I completely manufactured all those numbers because it basically is useless anyway. And I'm gonna explain why and cover, you know, the five things that you need to know about subwoofers and room sizing. Now, as you can see, I have a home theater in the RV and I'll be doing a tour of that at some point. Uh, so if there's any build details you're interested in, you can put it in the comments below. But I think it's a perfect place to begin discussing the topic because it demonstrates that I'm not guessing here at all. Uh, I'm going off of practical experience and practical experience that surprised even me. Uh, the entire RV is 40 foot with two slides and the theater portion is about 12 by 11, but really the way to look at it is the front half of the RV is all home theater in terms of subwoofer space. Um, so it's small. It's, it's small compared to most home theater rooms. And I knew it was going to be a challenge and that was part of why I wanted to do it. Now by comparison, the living room of the house is 24 by 24 feet, if you count the kitchen. Uh, and it's got a wall dividing it a little bit, but it's still a fairly large space to fill. Um, I've also tried putting subwoofers in a 10 by 10 room, very large subwoofers, just to test this theory as well. So here are the top five things to know about subwoofers and room sizing. Number five, dual subwoofers are absolutely necessary, and in my opinion, even more so in a small room. Uh, talk about going against conventional wisdom, right? <laughs> uh, I only have subjective experience to back that up, but it's my experience nonetheless. Dual subwoofers break down the standing wave, which is present in any sized room. So if you have a single subwoofer, you're going to get peaks and valleys and loud spots and dead spots. In a small room, it, it works the same as it does in a large room. It doesn't matter. You're going to have those issues if you run a single subwoofer. Duals matter. Number four is loudness. Now, assuming you're running dual match subwoofers, as you should, and you're running subwoofers from the list, any of them will work. And what I mean by that is if you're a normal person, you should be able to get plenty loud without a problem. Uh, now, I should point out that any of the subs on my list, you should run more gain than you would with a typical or shallow, say, shallow base subwoofer. The reason being is uh, your AVR is going to account for it in a different way. Anyway, check out my base hack series on that. Uh, adjusting subs by ear to be specific is the video, but you really want to address that because uh, if you run it and you just let your room corrections set your subwoofer levels, it's going to be too quiet. Um, so that's, that's something to understand. But here's the funny part. The difference in the gain uh, that I run in the RV and the gain that I run in the living room completely negligible. We're talking one dB or less in terms of how much gain I run uh, in the house versus in the RV. Now I've run the PB2000, PB2000 Pro, PB3000, and PB4000 in there. Okay, it wasn't just one set of subs. I've run quite a few in there. Same thing across the board. So that surprised even me. I thought that I would have to run lower gain and all of that, but it's not the case. Um, I didn't even expect that, but it's, it's all about relativity. You know, just because uh, a subwoofer is big does not mean it'll be overpowering. It's, it's all in the adjustments. And again, I'll point back to the base hack series on that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it just, that surprised even me. I did not expect that. Now, if you have a room over 600 or 800 square feet, then I would consider larger subwoofers and obviously two at a minimum. When the room is massive, that's the only time I ever consider room size. 
Otherwise, it just doesn't matter other than floor space and what you can shoehorn into the room, you know? <laughs> I mean, you put a little grease or... I'm kidding, don't grease up your subs. But it can be hard to fit large subs in a small room. That's really more of the uh, consideration for me is can I actually fit them? Um, not will they be overpowering. Can I physically, you know, get those subs in the room and have it work? That's more of an issue uh, rather than, oh, is it too much wattage? Is the driver too big? That doesn't matter to me. Number three, boundary gain. This is really the bigger issue, not so much the size of the room. You can have a very large room and have your sofa right up against the back wall like I do in the RV, and you'll experience way too much boundary gain, whether it's a 10 inch sub or a 15 inch sub. You know, the thing is, most of the time in small rooms, you're close to a boundary already. Uh, because you're trying to maximize the space in your room. Like in the RV, I can't bring the seating forward to get away from that boundary gain. It just doesn't work. And so you have to find other ways to deal with that. And the question is, how do you deal with that? The thing is, most of the time in small rooms, you're close to a boundary. That accidentally supports the myth that a large subwoofer will overpower a small room. You'll have that problem with any subwoofer you go with. Big, small, powerful, or weak. Uh, it's just a matter of how you deal with it, really. You can use bass traps. Uh, however, I found the most effective thing to do is to use high quality room correction, uh, like Odyssey XT32 uh, versus the lower end version. So when I first started doing the RV project, uh, I had the Denon X2000, which has the lower end version of Odyssey. I set it all up thinking this is gonna be great, and I had loads of boominess. I'm like, uh-oh, um, this is a huge investment. What did I do? Because <laughs> the whole idea is to be able to have people hear it and have it sound right, and it definitely wasn't sounding right. When I ran the uh, Denon X6200 in there that has XT32, my problems were solved. It fixed it, and it made it sound just the way I wanted it. So uh, your room correction is really important when it comes to dealing with boundary gain. So essentially, and counterintuitively, <laughs> You'll get better results using a more expensive AVR in a smaller room. Now, if you don't have boundary gain, it's easier to get by with a lower room correction. But honestly, I, I think it sounds better with the higher end version anyway. Um, so it's worth doing. Uh, but in a small room with boundary gain and stuff like that, it, it's critical. Uh, I think in my case, I wouldn't have been able to make it sound good if I didn't have the better room correction. That's, that's how much of a difference it made. Number two, no limits. Uh, Big, powerful subs don't have to be overbearing, okay? Uh, there's a gain adjustment, and using that, preferably with my base hack series and adjusting subs by ear, you should be able to get the largest subs to play well in the smallest rooms. It's just a matter of integration, not so much size. The crazy part about it is you still need to go dual. In the RV, I'm running dual PB2000 Pros. There's some reasons I picked that particular subwoofer, but my point is, is that I've also run the PB4000s, the PB3000s that are here right now, the PB2000 originals. I could also run the PB16 Ultras in there if I wanted to. And I have run a single subwoofer in there and I instantly didn't like it. There was way too much variation, uh, way too many dead spots and loud spots. It was all just bad news. It, it wasn't proper sounding bass as I know it. Um, so I had to run duels in there. You know, I could run the PB16 Ultras in there if I wanted to, but really it's kind of a, a size thing and weight thing. There's only so much weight I can put in there. I designed the home theater in the RV to be a demonstration rig so people can hear what deep bass is all about and also hear the benefits of all of my bass hacks being employed at once. Uh, and part of that is wanting to demonstrate something that's attainable. Now, the PB2000 Pros are very impressive and definitely deliver the type of premium experience that I want people to hear. Reliably, people are always surprised because it's not what they expected. And that's kind of the whole point. But if I have a setup that includes $5,000 worth of subwoofers, the automatic assumption is that they can't get anywhere close to that without spending that kind of money. And that kind of turns a fun experience into a bummer experience. And that's not what I'm trying to do. The PB2000 Pros are more attainable. They're definitely not cheap. I'm not saying that, um, but they don't sound cheap either. You're not walking into something and being like, well, great, this is something I can never afford. Um, and so that's one of the reasons I wanted to go with that because it was a, it's the lowest price point where you can still get premium bass, that explosiveness that I'm always talking about. Which brings me to number one, explosiveness. Uh, it's really the, the main difference when it comes to larger and smaller subs on the list. Uh, it's, and it's not 
quite the same across brands. So if you went from a 10 inch sub to a 12 inch sub of another brand on the list, you're not necessarily going to get more explosiveness because you know, some brands are more explosive than others. Uh, it all depends on how they think their response curve should be shaped. And so that's a personal tuning preference. Um, so, but usually within the same brand, uh, the explosiveness increases the larger and more amplifier power that you have. And so, you know, that's, uh, that's really the thing to keep in mind. Now, it doesn't really translate exactly to shallow base subwoofers for a number of reasons I can't really go into without making this a 40 minute video. Uh, but essentially, a 10 inch deep base subwoofer can be far more explosive than a shallow run of the mill 15 inch subwoofer. It really does make all the difference in the world. So to sum it up, no matter what size room you have, the biggest difference you're going to notice on my list is going to be the explosiveness. Uh, if you have a small room, you're going to have this issues with boundary gain no matter what sub you go with, whether it's a 10 inch sub, 15 inch sub, doesn't matter. You're going to have to deal with the boundary gain anyway. So why say, well, I have a small room, I can only have a small subwoofer. You don't have to. If you want that really premium impact and explosiveness and you want just, you want that feeling, then do it. Just know that you have to deal with it properly to get it done. You want the better room correction and you want to deal with the boundary gain issues and all that good stuff. Okay. And you can check out my tiny room, big base video where I talk about the things I do specifically to help that. Um, but you can, you're not, you're not stuck just because you have a small room does not mean that you're relegated to itty bitty subs. You can have the big boys if you want. Um, not saying you need them. It's, it, it's not what, people normally say. Uh, I've done it. I've put PB4000s in a very, very small room and it sounded phenomenal. Better than it does in here, if you can believe that. Um, it's just, it's, somehow it's a better sound in the RV than it is in the living room. So yeah, um, so I know what I'm talking about. It's, this isn't something I guess on. Uh, I've taken measurements. I've done all this stuff. I know what I'm listening for. It's fine. It's just a matter of can you fit it and can you deal with the uh, boundary gain issues? If you can deal with those two things and you can run better room correction and run a more precise type of room correction that I go into in my tiny room video, uh, it, it's, it's no problem at all, really. It's, it's just a matter of what you want. And so this is kind of a video to say, hey, don't feel limited. Now, if you're running a larger uh, room, yeah, you might need to go bigger just so your subs aren't working as hard. You know, you don't want your car to be revving at 9,000 RPMs all the time, right? So same kind of concept. You don't want your subs at working at their maximum level all the time. So a bigger sub might make sense if you have a really huge room. But from there on down, anything under 600 square feet, get what you want as long as you can fit it physically. So that's my top five on, you know, subwoofers and room sizing. Uh, I'm prepared for people to yell at me in all caps that I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm fine with that. I get it. Um, but I've done it and I've, I know what I'm looking for and I'm very happy with what I've been able to do in the RV. And, uh, I'm, like I said, I frankly enjoy it more than in the house. So, uh, I have fewer reflections. Um, you know, I've got the wood floor here and bare walls where in the RV, most everything is textile. So, uh, even the roof is textile. So, uh, or the ceiling, I should say. And so it, it sounds really good in there. So, um, but yeah, I just want to make this video because people ask me, I've got this size room, I've got so many cubic feet, I've got this, I've got that. It's like, you're telling me things I don't need to know. It's what kind of sub do you want? What kind of explosiveness do you want? What is, you know, what are your goals? Because you can make the subs work anywhere. Um, it's just, unless it's just way too big. And then, then that's another consideration. So anyway, hopefully that helps. Uh, I'm sure this is going to start a lot of arguments, but I'm cool with it. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching and please subscribe.